in this video i will discuss the foot in detail first we will discuss the tarsal bones and after that we will discuss the metatarsal and phalanges the ankle bones are seven bones and we have divided them into two rows first one is the proximal row and the second one is the distal row the proximal row include two bones the talus bone and the calcaneus bone this yellow bone is the talus bone and this is the calcaneus bone in the distal row we have four bones these three bones are called as the cuneiform bones this one is the medial cuneiform bone this is the intermediate cuneiform bone and this is the lateral cuneiform bone these three cuneiform bones are named according to their location since this is the medial side and this is the lateral side so this one is the medial intermediate and lateral cuneiform bone the fourth bone in the distal row is the cuboid bone between the proximal and the distal row there is one bone called the intermediate bone this intermediate bone which lies between the proximal and the distal row is called the navicular bone these five bones are the metatarsal bones and the bones of the distal row articulate with the metatarsals since the intermediate or navicular bone does not articulate with the metatarsal that's why it is not included in the distal row now let's came to the joint and articulation of these bones and that is quite simple in this model you can clearly see the tibia and the fibula bone the talus bone which is this bone articulated superiorly with the tibia and fibula the tibia and the fibula articulate only with the talus bone of the ankle now we will remove the tibia and the fibula to have a better look at the bones of the ankle the talus bone articulate with the navicular bone interiorly that you can clearly see from this view this is the talus bone articulating with the navicular bone also the talus bone below articulate with the calcaneus bone and this is also clearly visible here that below it articulate with the calcaneus bone so talus bone has three connection superiorly it is connected with the tibia and fibula interiorly it is connected with the navicular bone and below it is connected to the calcaneus bone now came to the calcaneus bone the calcaneus bone has two articulation superiorly it articulate with the talus bone as you can see here and anteriorly it articulate with the cuboid bone that you can see here the navicular bone also has two articulation posteriorly it articulate with the talus bone and anteriorly it articulate with the three cuneiform bones similarly the cuboid bone also has two articulation posteriorly it articulate with the calcaneus bone and anteriorly it articulate with the fourth and fifth metatarsal bone the three cuneiform bones also has two articulation posteriorly all the three cuneiform bones articulate with the navicular bone and anteriorly the medial cuneiform bone articulate with the first metatarsal the intermediate articulate with the second metatarsal and the lateral cuneiform bone articulate with the third metatarsal bone now we came to the bony landmarks of the ankle bone 
it's better to study the bony landmarks of all the ankle bones together in one model because if i separate these bones then it will be very difficult for you to know the anatomical position of each bone and you will be having a problem knowing the bony landmarks so first let's begin with the talus bone this is the talus bone the talus bone has the head neck and the body this is the head this is the neck and this hole is the body of the talus this is the trochlea of the talus the trochlea of the talus is a convex articular surface for the articulation with the tibia and fibula bone in the body of the talus there are two tubercles this one is the medial tubercle of the talus while this one is the lateral tubercle of the talus a few more important points about the talus bone the talus bone transmit the weight of the entire body from the lower legs to the foot talus bone is the second largest of the tarsal bones it is also one of the bones in the human body with the highest percentage of its surface area covered by the articular cartilage and no muscle is attached to the talus bone unlike most of the bones now let's come to the calcaneus bone in the calcaneus bone this is the calcaneal tuberosity and below this is the medial process of the calcaneal tuberosity while this is the lateral process of the calcaneal tuberosity this is the peroneal or fibular trochlea and this is the sustentaculum talli the calcaneus bone is also called as the heel bone it is the largest of the tarsal bone in the ankle bone this is the navicular bone and this is the tuberosity of the navicular bone while this is the cuboid bone and this is the tuberosity of the cuboid bone and if you look from the inferior view these two tuberosities are opposite to each other also notice in the cuboid bone there is a groove and this groove is for the fibularis or perineus longus tendon let me show you this with the model in this model i have removed most of the muscles so that you can clearly see through the groove of the cuboid bone passes this tendon now let's move our discussion toward the metatarsal and phalanges there are five metatarsal bones an important joint related to the metatarsal bones is the tarso metatarsal joint the joint that is formed between the tarsal bone and the metatarsal is called tarso metatarsal joint and there are five tarso metatarsal joint in one foot the first tarso metatarsal joint is in between the medial cuneiform bone and the first metatarsal second one is between the intermediate cuneiform bone and the second metatarsal third joint is between the lateral cuneiform bone and the third metatarsal the fourth and the fifth tarso metatarsal joint is in between the cuboid bone and the fourth and fifth metatarsal bone if we look one of the metatarsal bone is a representative then this is the base this is the body and this is the head of the metatarsal each of the metatarsal bone then form the metatarso pharyngeal joint since this is the metatarsal bone and this is the phalanx bone so this joint is called the metatarso pharyngeal joint in each phalanges there are 
three bones except the first phalanges which has two bones the first bone in each phalange is called the proximal phalange the last bone in each phalanx is called the distant phalanx and the phalanx that is between the proximal and the distal is called the middle phalanx bone now remember there is no middle phalanx bone in the first phalanges of the foot since this is the toe and the toe only has two bones the joint that is formed between each phalanx bone is called the interpharyngeal joint there are two interpharyngeal joint in each phalanges except the first phalanges which has only one interpharyngeal joint just like the metatarsal each phalanx has a base body and a head do not confuse the base of the phalanx or metatarsal with the head the base is always closed to the heel bone thank you